there's mercy enough, there's grace enough, there is love enough for all of us. In Lent, we take time to set ourselves closer to God, to make space in our lives for God. So I have to admit that Lent has felt like two and a half years. It has been a long time in which we have had to suffer with things that are difficult and traumatic. And so we get to Lent and we're told, you need to give up chocolate and coffee. And I'm not sure we need to do that this year. Because not only has it been rough because we're still under COVID, but now we're worried about war. What does it mean? I mean, I thought I was done with having to practice what happens when a nuclear bomb goes off after Ronald Reagan left office. And now I have to think about it again. So what do we do for Lent? How do we live into a life that is enough, that is good enough? One of the, the theme that I want us to have this Lent is from a worship series and a book called Good Enough. In it, Kate Bowler and Jessica Ritchie have a series of 40 devotionals that argue that your relationship with God is enough wherever you are. But here are things you can do that'll strengthen it, that'll make it better. And so in their first chapter, they talk about regula, meaning that each of us needs a rule of life, something that will make us regularly in touch with God. How many of you have a daily practice? And how many of you fail at it miserably? Okay? So I have friends, Lynn and Dan, who can get up every single morning every single morning without fail and meditate for 30 minutes. They set the alarm, they ignore the dosh hounds and cats, and they spend time with God. And they make me feel super guilty because 30 minutes of sitting still and meditating seems hard and difficult. So what can I do? What am I able to do? One of the things I learned is that I'm better able to pray when I'm walking my dog. So as I take River Song around the neighborhood, so if you're in the neighborhood over here, you will see me with the dog. I pray for all the people that drive by, that come out of their houses, and sometimes when nobody's around, I pray for the house and the people within it. And I pray for those who God has entrusted me to take care of. But it's easier for me to pray as I'm walking because I can give up all the stuff my head is thinking about, all the things that I haven't got done, all the things that I need to do next, and start praying. But, as Kate Bowler argues, it's hard this year. It is hard because I keep thinking my stuff is going to arrive any day now. And yet it hasn't. So this Lent, what can you do to give you a regular practice? This idea of having a regular practice grew out of the tradition of St. Benedict who decided that his community of monks needed to have a way in which they could order their life, could have a regular set schedule that would help them draw closer to God. And so he set up a practice that would help them to connect with God, praying certain hours of the day, working, eating, and worshiping. And the monks tried to poison him and kill him because he set up this regularly ordered schedule of life. 
Meaning that even the people we find that have the most ability to practice sometimes run into the most trouble in getting other people to experience it. Now they got past the whole trying to kill him. And Benedict set up this order, this way of life that was meant to be a road of moderation. That there would be times, regularly scheduled times, to pray and read and worship God. And there would be times in which you would work and times in which you would relax. But it was meant to be something that wasn't burdensome, but something that opened you up to the place of God. So, in, in our scripture today, Jesus had just been baptized. And the Holy Spirit fills him and throws him out into the wilderness. Now, I like Mark's version better because it just says Jesus was tempted in the wilderness. And it said he struggles with things. It's like two sentences, right? But we're in the year of Luke. And Luke wants us to think about things in certain ways. So Luke talks about the devil coming and tempting Jesus with the things that he thinks will draw him away from God. And when we normally think about this scripture, we think about Jesus having the right answers and pushing against the evil that is tempting him. But what if we looked at this scripture as a way of Jesus trying to draw near to God? That when he was hungry and he knew he had the ability to bring food to himself, He's reminded of the story from Deuteronomy in which the Israelites are hungry because they've been wandering for 40 years. <clears throat> and they're complaining about the food that they've been given. But that food, that food wasn't meant to be a burden. It was meant to be a peace, a place, an ability to be filled so that they could continue to draw closer to God. And when he's in that wilderness and he realizes that the Holy Spirit is flowing through him, when he realizes that the Spirit has this power within him that could transform and change the world, he instead wants to draw closer to God. He instead wants to say that it isn't about what I can do or what I should do. It's about how God relates to me in my life. And when he's placed at the top of the temple and offered, the power offered to have his life saved from everything that's going to come at him. He again turns to God. He again moves closer to God. This one, that would be my invitation to you. Move closer to God. In whatever way works, and however often it works, whether it is giving up chocolate and taking that money that you would have spent every day on the chocolate and using it to do some good, whether it is opening up your Bible and reading so don't pick the difficult sections. Ignore Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, and move towards the Psalms 
or to the gospel. And read a little bit every day, asking God to share with you. Asking God to surround you in that moment that those words may help you. Maybe this day, this Lent, you could take on the practice of opening that directory we have and praying for a different person in the church every day. But here's the thing. There is grace enough, there is mercy enough, there is love enough that you are good enough that even if whatever practice you choose for Lent, you fail tomorrow, you can start again. That God's grace and love and mercy will be there to help you pick up whatever piece you've let go. Amen.